Today we've got a DIY Internet of Things project. We're going to connect Arduino Nano 33 IoT to Arduino Cloud so that we can monitor temperature and humidity while 3D printing. I had some pretty good luck printing in my enclosure during the winter time where humidity was really low and I could maintain temperature because the garage was pretty cold. Now in March we're having bigger fluctuations in temperature and humidity and it's harder to control and I end up with results like this. Here's my enclosure, my printing enclosure that I have in the garage. But uh, This is where we're going to keep the uh, humidity and temperature monitor here so we can monitor it over the internet. This is what I used previously. It's a lacrosse weather station. Actually, it worked really well, but it is Bluetooth, and I feel like I need something where I can monitor humidity and temperature from the web so I can accommodate for those big fluctuations. I ended up buying this, which actually works pretty well, but again, it's Bluetooth, and uh, I can't check it at work. That's the problem. So I'm putting this in here for about an hour or so, maybe two hours, just to see how close it is to this. And we'll eventually add some extras to it so that we can uh, take care of the temperature spikes and dips and, and humidity. So it should be a fun project, an ongoing project. So we'll see how it turns out. The items I'm using in this video are the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, a breadboard, male to male jumper wires, 9 volt battery, and a 9 volt battery snap connector. The sensor is connected to 3.3 volt and ground on the Arduino. The output pin of the sensor is connected to pin 2, and the 9 volt is connected to VIN and ground. Now here we are back in Arduino cloud. Previously we did a video with an LED light switch just to be able to familiarize ourselves with Arduino cloud and navigate through the tabs and set it up. So what we're going to do today is use our temperature and humidity sensor here and we're going to use that to monitor an environment. For me it's going to be the inside of an enclosure for a 3D printer and I can monitor that from home or for from work or wherever. So that's what we're going to set up today and so let's go ahead and open up the software here the website and as you can see I have one thing out of ten that was our previous uh, project here. Let's go over to devices and you know what let's plug our device in. That's how we want to start this. So plug your device in. I'm just plugging mine into the computer here and you will see it pop up here hopefully. We also have to open create agent. It's right there. You can't see it on, on your screen, but it, it is running in the background. So let's go to devices and add a device. Click on Arduino. And I'm not going to need to install. I already have everything I need. I'm just going to let it detect the device and then I'm going to switch it over to a new project. So configure, got it. Okay, so there we are. We're online. Let's go ahead and set up our other project, and then we can switch our device, our Nano, over to this project. So let's go over here and set up our thing. And here's our old thing, but we want a new thing. So we'll add thing up here. And the first variable that we will add uh, will be temperature. And that will be a floating point number. And typically these are read only. Add variable. Let's go ahead and humidity. Add humidity. And it will be a floating point number. And it will be read only as well. Add variable. If I'm going through this very quickly, um, I, the previous video I go through it a little bit slower. Hopefully it'll be a little more helpful. Um, and I'll have the, the link for that in the description and in the video if you catch that. Uh, so go to associated device. We want to associate this device, even though it's currently associated with another device, another project. Um, the option may come up. Do you want to uh, disconnect? You click yes and then you associate it with this project. So that's, that's what we did here. All right, and then we go to network. Type in your uh, Wi-Fi name and password. Save. And up here it says Sketch 2. If you um, hold your cursor over that, sorry, over the bell, it'll tell you what the updates are. 
or if you click the bell. But we're not done yet, so we're going to go back and go to dashboard. And on the dashboard, we want to create a new dashboard actually. And we want to add. And for the temperature, we'll just do a slider. And we'll link a variable. And that variable will be. Um, so we haven't titled our new thing yet. So you want to select the thing that you just created and uh, connect it to the temperature variable. Link. All right. And then let's uh, do 100. I don't see it ever reaching 100 degrees, but. We'll just make that the max and then we'll go back up to add and for, for humidity we'll add percentage widget and for that let's rename this humidity link it to select our uh, new thing and then link it to humidity link variable so it looks good to me go to done let's add some other things just um, let's just add let's add a chart that sounds good doesn't it a chart let's call this chart temperature temp how about temp and then link variable and we will link it to the temperature select the new thing temperature link and let's add one for humidity click done add come down here and let's do percentage well no sorry cancel that can you cancel I don't know just click done and then we'll we'll delete it here delete I want another chart I don't want another widget that I already have so go down to chart there we go and call this one humidity and then you want to link the variable to humidity. All right, done. And then if you want to move these around, this is your cell phone view. This is, well, this must be your cell phone view. And then this is your desktop view. All right, so let's just, um, these are kind of backwards here. Let's do this. Let's move this over. This makes more sense to me. Right, just like that, and this is what it looks like on the cell phone, which is fine. Let's let's be done with that. Let's rename this. Just something simple. Temp, humid. Sounds reasonable. Let's go back to let's go back to devices. Let's rename this device. Or sorry, not devices. Things. And then name this rename temp humid. Rename. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go up to our sketch. And then I'm just going to upload it because I always do that before I go um, to the other screen to upload the sketch. Okay, seems to be fine now. It seems to be moving really slow, so I'm going to speed it up a bit. There we go. Successful. Let's go back to this drop down menu and then click on sketches. And in the sketches, let's select. Let's delete that one or just ignore it. Um, I did this previously just to uh, have an idea of what I'm doing. So let's click on the new one here. And this is the just the template that they give us. So I'm going to switch over to Arduino IDE. At the top of the sketch you'll see include thing properties.h and include dht.h. These are libraries that you're going to need for the project and it also contains files for configuration connecting to the Arduino IoT cloud. Right below that we define the sensor pin on pin 2 of the Arduino and we define what type of uh, DHT sensor we're using and we're using the DHT11. 
And at line 34, we initialize properties for the cloud communication, and then we begin the Arduino IoT cloud connection, and we set our debug message level. Then finally, we initialize the DHT sensor with the begin method. Then we have the loop function, and this runs continuously after the setup is finished. And we start out by calling the Arduino.cloud update. Now this maintains the cloud connection and handles any incoming data. Then at line 46, it reads sensor data and updates the cloud variables with the read sensors and update cloud function. Now the next section is the read sensors and update cloud function. And this reads humidity and temperature from the DHT sensor. Then it checks if the readings are valid and prints that humidity and temperature to the serial monitor. Okay, so we have our code, so let's go ahead and upload it. And it should say busy. And it's done. So we'll go back up here and we can switch over to the monitor and see that it's given us a humidity and temperature. So it's good. Now we can disconnect it from the computer. Remember to plug your battery in first. Now this sketch will be available on the Facebook page and I'll link it in the description. If you set yours up just like I did, you should have no problem with it. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to the app, open it up just to make sure that it's reading temperature and humidity. And it is, temperature 74.3, humidity is 49. There's no graph yet, but everything does look good so far. It's been about an hour, so I'm gonna open the app up and go back in and check it out. I wanna show you that you can check it either on the app on the phone, or you can go on the web and check it at the Arduino Cloud website. There are my graphs. So let's compare that to what we see on the website here when we log into the cloud. I'm familiar with the Bluetooth sensor that's in the enclosure, so I want to check that against the Arduino temperature here. And it's 62.4, 78%, 62 68.96, it's pretty close, 73%. So the temperature is very close, but the humidity has always been about 5% off, which gives me a baseline to work with. Since I've been using the white Bluetooth sensor for a while, I am pretty familiar with it. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Now I can check my 3D printing environment from anywhere, and I can plan accordingly. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully the video was helpful to you. If it was, don't forget to like it by giving it a thumbs up. Also, share it with other people. Check out our Facebook page, and subscribe if uh, you like this kind of stuff. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.